Did you know that in the United States, over 60% of all municipal water supplies have sodium fluoride added to them? Now, I wouldn't be surprised if you weren't aware of that fact, because we don't receive any kind of notification on our water bill. We don't get any kind of notice that we have to sign off on. We're not told at all. And we're definitely not given the option to opt out. Now, keep in mind, this is the same substance that, when added to toothpaste, requires a warning label. Now, if you use fluoridated toothpaste, take a look at the back. Now, you'll find a warning that says something like this. Warning, keep out of reach of children under six years of age. If you accidentally swallow more than used for brushing, seek professional help or contact poison control immediately. Now, they're required to put that label on there for a reason. Fluoride is established as a poison. And at high enough doses, it can kill you. Now, what they don't talk about is the effects with low exposures. And that's what I'm going to go over in this video. Now, I've spent quite a bit of time researching this subject, and I made a collection of links um, to established medical papers, to the abstracts at least, and I'm going to be posting them at the bottom. So I recommend that if you have any doubts about the uh, facts that I'm talking about here, that you check the links and verify it for yourself, because I'm not making this stuff up. Now, the official justification for fluoridating the water supply is to lower the occurrence of cavities in the population. Now, if you do serious research on the subject, you'll find that there's no strong empirical evidence linking the fluoridation of a water supply and the reduction of cavities in the population at all. However, there are studies showing the adverse effects of drinking that same fluoride over a long period of time. Now, before we go into any of the specifics, I want you to just stop and think about it for a second yourself, just on a simple common sense level. Does it make sense to drink fluoride to help your teeth? I mean, most people already use fluoridated toothpaste, and then you're applying the fluoride directly where it belongs, supposedly, and directly to the teeth. Now, if you're drinking water, it's passing over your teeth, but the majority of the concentration is going to end up in your system. You're gonna actually going to be ingesting it. So it's kind of like drinking sunscreen to help prevent a sunburn. Now, if you think I'm an alone extremist here, I want you to consider this. I'm going to read off a list of countries which have officially banned water fluoridation. China, Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Japan. Now this definitely isn't a comprehensive list. It's 98% of European countries which have banned fluoridation. And there's probably other countries that I just wasn't able to find information on. Now if water fluoridation was actually effective, wouldn't we be hearing about higher rates of cavities and tooth problems in these countries? Now, there is an awful lot of pro-fluoridation propaganda out there, but they never talk about this. They never talk about the actual empirical evidence to back up their claims. They just act like it's already proven. Now, even if there was strong empirical evidence showing that fluoridating the water supply could actually reduce the cavities of a population, it still would not be worth it or ethical once you understand the biological effects of fluoride when it's ingested. Did you know that water fluoridation has been linked to higher rates of bone cancer, to higher rates of osteoarthritis, and to repetitive stress injury. It's also been shown to have genotoxic effects, which means it causes genetic damage. It's also been shown to increase the concentration of lead in the blood of children, strangely enough. Now we're just getting started here. It gets more interesting. There's been studies, and I'm going to link to one of them below, that show that it causes significant damage to the reproductive system and can basically lead to infertility. Now, fluoride is also a neurotoxin, and there's been significant animal testing which has shown that exposure to fluoride can cause ADD-like symptoms, attention deficit disorder, or sluggishness, and a reduced IQ. Now, the reduction of IQ is also confirmed by studies done in China where uh, children who had been exposed environmentally through uh, mining to uh, sodium fluoride uh, were compared to children in a town nearby which hadn't been exposed, and they found a significant point difference and the IQ of the children in the town that were exposed. Now, fluoride also has other more subtle effects on the brain as well. Those effects were not missed by Hitler, who happened to be the first to actually institute water fluoridation, and he did so in the concentration camps in order to make the prisoners more docile and less able to resist. Now, as is often the case when I make this kind of videos, my intention here is not to be the end-all reference for this subject. If you care about your health, and if you care about the health of your family, then it's up to you to do the research. Now, once you are convinced that there is a problem, that we are being poisoned through our water system, the question is this, what are we going to do about it? 
Now, obviously, the first step is to find out if your city actually does put fluoride in the water. Chances are that it does. Now, if that is the case, then the next step is to find a way to stop drinking it. Now, that's not always as easy as it might sound because the Brita water filters in that low-end kind of water filters that you'll find at, say, Walmart, don't actually remove fluoride. They don't even consider fluoride to be a toxin that needs to be removed. In most towns, there are uh, water dispenser systems that you can go and pay 35 cents a gallon or something like that uh, to get filtered water, uh, filling up your own jug that um, doesn't have fluoride in it. Or you can lay down the big bucks and get, you know, like a Berkey water filter, one of those high-end filters that actually specifically claims to get the fluoride out. And keep that in mind. If it doesn't claim to get the fluoride out, then it doesn't. Now, to stop poisoning yourself and your family is, is important. It's the first step, but that's not enough. Even if you're not drinking that water yourself, it's not okay that they're poisoning the rest of the population. Um, and that has a direct effect on society because it's affecting their neurological development. It's affecting their IQs, and it's leading to a dumbing down of the population. Now, the upside here is that this is something we can affect on a local level because water fluoridation is decided on a city-by-city -city basis. I think it's time that we as individuals do some investigation and find out who's in charge of the water fluoridation system in our individual towns and put some political pressure on them. Now, for those of you who find the implications of what I'm saying here hard to swallow, I want to leave you with this short little snippet to put things in context. Now, I want you to see this because when you go out doing research about fluoride, you're going to find a lot of pro-fluoride propaganda, people telling you how great it is that we're putting fluoride in the water. Now, this little propaganda piece cooked up by the cigarette companies uh, may seem ridiculous to us now, but in the 50s, it wasn't ridiculous because people didn't know better, so it worked. Someday, history is going to look back at water fluoridation, and it's going to seem just as ridiculous. A responsible consulting organization reports this study by a competent medical specialist and his staff on the effects of smoking Chesterfields. A group of people smoked only Chesterfields for six months in their normal amount, 10 to 40 a day. 45% of the group have smoked Chesterfields from 1 to 30 years for an average of 10 years each. At the beginning and end of the six months period, each smoker was given a thorough examination including x-rays. The examination covered the sinuses, nose, ears, and throat. After a thorough examination of every member of the group, the medical specialist stated, it is my opinion that the ears, nose, throat, and accessory organs of all participating subjects examined by me were not adversely affected in the six months period by smoking the cigarettes provided. Remember this report and buy Chesterfields. Regular or king size. Premium quality Chesterfield. Much milder. <laughs>